Welcome back, Zerge fans, to Nanalisa Don. I'm your host, Dominic, or Shadow Fury, whichever you prefer. And we are having an FFA! Because why not? So, yeah, FFA time. We have Jasper on Hovercraft versus King's Dead on Spiders versus Mortez on Tanks versus Diplomat Shadow Chaos on Tanks versus Force Gone on Cloakies versus Taf Taftaflex Nope on Amphbots and versus Etsuri on Shieldbots versus Jasper. So, seven way FFA on Fata Morgana. A map which I thought this was raised so it would look kind of cooler, but I guess the mountains are fine. I haven't really played this map myself, actually. I don't know. No, I think I have. I think I have once. I think it was Evil RTS that I played this map on. Yeah, I'm not... I don't play a huge amount of FFA, but I figured, you know what? Let's do a little bit of casting of that, because it's a different thing that I've done occasionally, but a 7-player FFA I have not done. So starting out, King's Dead first being fairly aggressive, getting some fleas out there, trying to see what's going on with Jasper. Like, hey Jasper, what's up? I want to know exactly what's going on with you, or at the very least, this flea is like, I'm just going to see everything. Which admittedly, it it is? I'm not sure. No, it's not doing a bad job, actually, all things considered. <laughs> it's able to see the commander, no problem. Doesn't see the factory, though. None of, the com none of these fleas do, I'm afraid. Though, considering Kingstead has managed to get these fleas out, that is a very good start for them. I mean, they have knowledge, and with FFA, the important thing is knowing what your opponents are doing. Because remember, every player is against every other player. So, unless they form alliances midway through the game, which maybe they will, I don't know. I kind of doubt it. But unless they do that, the only way they know who's going to attack is if someone attacks, unless they've scouted in advance. That being said, I'm a little surprised we aren't seeing any sparrows. Because we could... Theoretically, they do exist in this version of the game, but we aren't. However, we are getting the first first shots fired coming in here with Jasper. Sorry, Etsuri coming in, trying to get rid of Tataflex Taf Nofs and succeeding in getting rid of Tataflex Taf Nofs Conch, getting rid of their early 4.3 metal extractor in the center of the map. And that being, and that's the thing though, Tataflex Nope, they more or less took Etsuri's plus four metal extractor. If you look at the way the metal extractors are arranged, there are seven of them. Basically, one per player. Oh, but they're weirdly positioned. No, hang on. That's Tafta's. That's Etsuri's. So, Tafta's actually stolen... They've stolen Force Gods. And Force Gods gonna have to steal Diplomat Shadow Kaus's. Which means there's... Yeah, well, I mean, that's how it works. There's always a fight, but... Diplomat Shadow Kaus looks like they are ahead of the game when it comes to using the Sparrows. And seeing what's going on. Same time, though, Tad Flex and Nope, very keen on making sure they have knowledge of the center of the map, getting the radar on the lake, so they know exactly what's happening here, and at the very least, they know what's going on in their neighborhood. They know where Etsuri is attacking, they know where to retreat their conches. Oof. They don't, however, know that there is a snitch there. Not losing too much, though. Losing one scallop. Sorry, losing a duck, damaging a scallop. The scallop, still able to get in, should still be able to wipe out most of the stuff here. Won't be able to get rid of the bandits, though. The bandits will be finishing it off. But yeah. Okay, thanks for the tip. Sorry, someone in the chat mentioning I should avoid paying attention to details in FFA, which is a fair point. So, eastern side of the map, we have Diplomat Shadow Cows pushing into the center as well, but Kingstad has managed to maintain a reasonably strong setup, economically speaking. They do currently have the strongest economy, 23 metal and energy. And they are likely to be the main target as a result, if anyone realizes this, which clearly Diplomat Shadow Cows does. But King's Tad, again, they have full knowledge of what's going on in the map, and even though they just lost that Metal Extractor expansion, they're still in a reasonably strong position. But again, Tataflex and Nope also trying to maintain their position, which is coming with some difficulty. Tataflex and Nope, they've gotten several strong Metal Extractors. They are, however, still having to deal with Etsuri's assaults. They're constant assaults, but the boys are not going to be able to stop. The Stardust will be able to, but that is not going to be... Actually, this is going to be relevant. It's not going to be a thing the bandits are going to try to deal with. I think there's enough bandits to actually stop it, but no attempts are being made. Same time, though, Crab coming in immediately from Kingstead to start taking out Jasper, and not a whole lot Jasper has is going to build up for it. Like, Kingstead, their scouting already revealed that there's not a whole lot of stuff here that Jasper has ready. I mean, they have a lance going up, but that's not going to be enough. Same time, though, Edsuri still continuing to push in onto Tataflex and Nope. Managing to deal a little more damage, possibly get rid of another conch. But that's happening at the same time as this assault here with Jasper. Jasper coming in with a maces, countering the crab as best they can. The crab should be able to hit... No, not quite hit the factory. From other parts of the ridge it can, but the mace, that is still being a big threat. 
Now, widows are available to start taking on the maces, but it's not going to be... It's not enough widows. You need one widow per mace to have any real impact. I mean, I suppose you could reduce the number of maces that come in, but right now, Kingstad doesn't have defenses. Their entire army was focused on getting rid of this factory, and while they are succeeding in doing that, they are going to be losing their own in the process, potentially. Stardust is going to be able to get rid of some of these maces, so at the very least, Jasper has been rebuffed, but Kingstad still lost a fair amount of their economy, and that means Tap Flex Nope and Etsuri are currently vying for top spot. As more snitches come in, start threatening Tap Flex Nope's commander, wipes out their army, and the next batch of snitches comes in here. Are not snitches, no. Yeah, they're snitches. How are they still close? Iris snitches. Iris snitches coming in to wipe out Tactic Flight and Nope's commander. Opening that up quite a bit, while at the same time Jasper looks to be the first to go down. So Tactic Flight and Nope and Etsuri pretty well on a stalemate. Diplomat Shadow Chaos pushing in on Mortez's territory, but not really doing a whole lot of damage. Kingstead trying to wipe out Jasper completely and currently succeeding remarkably well. And Force God just, just minding their own business. They're just hanging out on the platform with their workers and not really doing much else. It's like, nope, just get me out of the game. It's like, okay, cool, Force God. That's that's great. At the same time, though, Jasper has managed to survive just barely, but King's Dead, they are going to push in. They have they have the forces to at least threaten Jasper's commander, and Jasper has no way of building anything else over the western side of the map. Etsuri, still a bit of a stalemate. No real easy way of getting through that Stardust. And Spider Factory being built up by Tapteflex and Nope. So, Tapteflex and Nope, still in a strong position. Still the strong economy. Still has not quite the strongest economy. Actually, Etsuri is a little bit stronger than... Actually, considerably stronger than them. Tadflex and Nope has been relying entirely on Reclaim at this point. So Etsuri, you know, one good shot. We'll be able to get in there. And Iris snitches getting in and they can take out that Stardust. Then that opens everything up. And I think they will be able to. Same time, north side of the map. Yeah, there's, there's the end. The Recluses are finishing off Jasper's base. And there's the Snitches coming in. Do not get rid of the Stardust. They don't really get rid of anything but themselves and a handful of ducks and scallops. So, that's, however, only one of the Snitches. Another Snitch coming in here and gets to the factories. That is all the factories damaged but not dead. The Iris has been revealed quickly enough and the Stardust is still alive. Does get rid of the Snitch before it's able to take out any more of the factories. So, Etsuri's Assault not quite managing to do all the damage it could have done. Still, though, Snitches are coming in here to continue assaulting. So, Etsuri could still be able to get rid of everything in Tactical Echnosis' army. Jasper, at the same time, being forced into a lake. As there's not a whole lot that Kingstad can do about that. But Kingstad is also really painting a target on their back. Remember, this is FFA. Everyone's against everyone. We might see Tactical and Nope and Etsuri decide, Hey, you know what? Maybe we should not fight right now. Just a thought. But, nope. If that's a thought, it's not an active thought. It's not something that anyone's actually really pushing in. But yeah, Jasper calling for help. And looks like they are going to go down despite their best efforts. It is not a pretty sight for them, I'm afraid. But I think Etsuri figures they can just get rid of Tactiflex and Nope. And then use all the combined resources to become a threat to Kingstead. Now, that being said, Mortez and Diplomat Shadow Chaos finally starting to get their own war going. Mostly just as a frontline setup, not really a whole lot of damage being passed between the two of them. Mortez looks like they just want to hold on to what they have. David Machado Chaos not really doing a whole lot to make an opening. I mean, Mortez kind of even on economy, kind of even on army. But that's about it. I'm honestly a bit surprised that the two of them aren't going, Hey, you know what? Kingstead's right next to us and a threat. They're probably going to come for us next. So maybe we should go for them. And as far as Etsuri isn't going... I mean, Etsuri, like I said, clearly they want to kill off Tadflex and Nope as soon as they can. Because if they do that, then they can use the resources to fight Kingstad directly, but that's not happening. I mean, the resources would be handy. Oh yeah, and for Galamesh's concern, anyone who's wondering, the way that the Iris was built is that it's a building you can build. Just, you, It's just a thing you can build. You just have... Just Iris... Cornea, rather. It's Cornea. So I think you can build it morphs into the iris. It works really well. Anyway, at this point, small fight going on between Diplomat Shadow Chaos and Mortez. Mortez getting some damage done, managing to get a little bit in the way of some harassment. Not managing to get rid of Diplomat Shadow Chaos's worker, though, and ultimately not managing to get in and do much of a threat to Diplomat Shadow Chaos. 
Same time over the western side of the map. Etsuri continuing to find themselves in a bit of a bind trying to get rid of Tactiflex and Nope, which again, at this point, seriously, should probably talk about an alliance to get rid of Kingstead. Like, Kingstead's right there. Etsuri might want to go, okay, you know what, you know what? I have the upper hand here, but I'm kind of worried about Kingstead. Maybe we should just call this, like, I'll hold back if you help me get rid of Kingstead. Because, I mean, Etsuri is in a bargaining position. They could say that. This is definitely a thing they could do. Same time, similar things to be said between Diplomat Chattacaus and Mortez. The Mortez, they are the one threatened by Kingstead. Diplomat Chattacaus probably doesn't care. Probably figures that if I get rid of Mortez, I get the resources, I become on par with Kingstead, I don't have to worry about it. And that seems to be exactly what they're going to be doing. I don't think Diplomat Chattacaus has much concern about being able to get rid of Mortez. Well, Etsuri, on the other hand, are they're having a real tough time getting rid of everything that Tapiflex and Nope has built up. And they are directly threatened by Kingstead, and Kingstead has just come... A, if it weren't for the fact that Kingstead is obsessed with destroying Jasper, Kingstead would probably have moved on to Etsuri by now, and Etsuri would be in a very tight spot, fighting a two-front war, where they are winning on one front, but they could say, hey, you know what? I... my vassal. That would work. At any rate, this is still... Oh, seriously, that's... That's not doing anything, is it? Like, the water... The water blocks that shot. The valiant effort, but rockets don't penetrate water, I'm afraid. So, yeah, Etsuri, again, they are... They're pushing. They got rid of the Stardust. They're at least in a position where they can start to really attack. Flea's coming in from Tapflex Nope to try to stop that... And indeed, it's it can at least force a bit of a retreat. But it looks like Etsuri is just way too confident. They have the outlaws. They have buried outlaws as defenses. Yeah, this is Etsuri setting up. This is the last... I think this is the last defense for Tatflex and Nope, to be honest. I don't think they have a whole lot else to work with. And at the same time, though, Tatflex and Nope does have a lot of economy. That is one thing they've built out quite a bit. Just, their main base is heavily threatened. And Etsuri realizing this, going for that economy... Same time over the southeast side of the map, we have Diplomat Chattacaus taking out Mortez's factory. This is pretty much the final blow. Mortez does not have anywhere near the strength of defenses that that Tactiflex and Nope has, so this should be Diplomat Chattacaus basically being the next player to get two bases to themselves following Kingstead's footsteps. Now, of course, Etz3, they are going to try to be the third player to do so, and I think they have a reasonably good shot of doing it. It's just... It just comes down to whether or not Kingstead attacks and when. Like, how obsessed is Kingstad with getting rid of Jasper before Jasper gets that Grizzly up? Which is going to be a minute and a half. It's not like it's immediate. But that is still an important question. Because, of course, Diplomatic House, they've now put themselves in a similar position to Kingstad. But they've done it second, so Kingstad's still kind of, in theory, the target with the, or the person with the target painted on their back. And Force God, again, just kind of out of the fight. Because they don't really want to fight anymore. Are they still... They are still terraforming their way up. Okay, that's cool. Same time, though, there's Kingstead coming with the amp bots of their own, getting rid of Jasper completely. So that is the first death. Jasper, I mean, kind of a foregone conclusion, but now at this point, Jasper goes down, Mortez goes down immediately afterwards. So Diplomat Chattacaus and Kingstead, currently the two strongest players in this, or the two strongest, most economically viable players in this game. Edsuri soon to join them as Tap to Flex and Nope, currently in dire straits. They still have their factories, they still have some units, they still have some economy, but they've lost almost all of it. The center of the map was completely wiped out. Tap Flex Nope took most of the expansions there, and they are gone. At the same time, Kingstead is taking those expansions where available and overdriving them considerably. Like, a little over double overdrive. So, Kingstead, still the threat. Still the main thing. Diplomat Chattacaus, definitely the second threat. I... I'm really curious if we're going to see Diplomat Chattacaus and Etsuri decide to come together to fight Kingstead. Because right now, Force God is a non-player, essentially. I'm not sure what they're doing. If you want to spectate, there is a dedicated spectator panel, but I suppose they wanted to try it out for a little while, and then they go. At the same time, Etsuri still having a bit of a hard time here. Like, Kingstead really could attack here. If Kingstead attacked right now, Etsuri would go down, forced to retreat, opening up Tactiflex and Nope, and meaning that Tactiflex and Nope would be indebted to Kingstad for this game. I'm not quite sure if the politics work that way, honestly. But I would think, you know, if the Kingstad does that, that would mean Tactiflex Nope has to think, oh, you know what, Kingstad's kind of on my side, at least for now, and not immediately worry about it too much. Although I guess Kingstad could then just sweep in and kill off Tactiflex Nope immediately afterwards, so yeah. 
Which doesn't even matter. Tactical Black Snope has resigned. So now it is a three-way between Kingstad, Itzuri, and Deepa Machata Kaos. As Deepa Machata Kaos threatening Kingstad's base directly. It's Kingstad hoping for the best when it comes to anything. But Kingstad's base is still heavily threatened. These Nimbuses aren't really... They're being responded to by that Thresher. But it took a little while to get that built up. So a lot of damage has been dealt in the process. And Kingstad does know now. They have a threat over to the south. And they've got to deal with it. Etzer, on the other hand, still has to clean up all the stuff that was left behind by Tactiplex and Nope. Once that's done, they'll still not be in a great position to fight Kingstead. I mean, Etzer has been expending a lot of forces over to the south. They've been pushing a lot of damage there. Not really taking a huge amount of metal extractors. They are taking the center, so they are at least fairly even on that. But Kingstead is way ahead, primarily due to overdrive. I mean, the amount of overdrive any one of these metal extractors has on this grid is, what, 104, 107%? But there's a lot of metal extractors. That is amounting to pretty much the entire advantage Kingstad has is these metal extractors. Which may not matter. The energy pylons are being taken out by Diplomat Chattakaos. I think Diplomat Chattakaos realizes that if those pylons go down, so does a lot of Kingstad's power. Though so did Kingstad, which is why they are underwater. Not a bad idea. Still, though, Diplomat Chattakaos coming in there with that scorpion in the center, setting up to at least... Attack Kingstad from multiple fronts. Not a bad idea. That still keeps Etsuri open to take a tap to flex to Nope. I mean, Etsuri, they're just getting rid of what is essentially just a punching bag. So, Dippin' Machata Kaos and Kingstad primarily fighting it out. Etsuri pretty much building up in the background. Like, no one's really fighting Etsuri. Kingstad and Dippin' Machata Kaos is going at it, and Etsuri is completely ignored. They've taken a huge chunk of the map. I mean, right now, what do people even know? Kingstad kind of knows a little bit about what's being built up, but not much. Deepa Machata Kaos... Sorry, Deepa Machata Kaos knows that much. Kingstad knows a little bit more. They know that there's stuff being built up in the metal extractors. They know that Etsuri is kind of getting a bit of threat. But they don't really know what's happening. And Force God has also surrendered, having just put their units on a platform. Okay, cool. Anyway, Force God throwing in the towel for reasons that are kind of obvious. They never really wanted to play in the first place, apparently. As Etsuri is able to finish off Tactiflex and Nope. So Dippin' Machata Kaos looks like they're trying to get Etsuri on board with taking out Kingstead and then 1v1ing between the two of them. Etsuri does not seem interested. Etsuri has entirely been focused on getting rid of Tactiflex and Nope's base. Just cleaning that up, building it all. And that is... That is an option. I mean, it's certainly not a bad one. But again, Etsuri is behind economically. If Etsuri and Diplomat Chattakaos do team up, they will be economically on par with Kingstead. Which is a very good point. Though admittedly, the Scorpion is actually doing a pretty decent job. With the Widows coming in, though, it won't be enough, as the Widows do manage to stun it out. Right as it itself gets the stunning out. But Stinger gets itself back on track. And that is going to be a very dead Scorpion very shortly. Opening Diplomat Chattakaos up to retaliation, as most of their forces were trying to get rid of that Scorpion. Sorry, we're making that scorpion, my bad. Oh, and apparently... Was there a chat? Oh, for, Force God. I see, Force God just... Just completely ruined it. By having scattered it out, apparently. And Etsuri, again, just taking out... Like, cleaning up all the dead players. Which, again, I kind of get. But at the same time, it's like, okay, seriously, the... They're dead. Like, you don't need to worry about them anymore. They are dead. They're no longer a concern. But sure, whatever. Why not? At any rate, Force God is at least going to be more resources for Etsuri. Right now, Etsuri is actually looking really strong as far as getting their economy going. Once they can start building up, getting some overdrive set up, and they are doing exactly that, then we should be seeing Etsuri start to run away with this game. As King's Dad and Deep Machado of Chaos... They are going at it. Now, Kingstad is definitely ahead. They've got loads of Singularity Overdrive. But since they are focusing primarily on Diplomat Shadow Chaos, only now Diplomat Shadow Chaos is going for Etsuri as well, realizing, hey, wait a sec, this Etsuri character, they're being a threat. Like, they're actually going to be a problem later on as Etsuri is taking out Force God. And Force God's resources are resources. They're important to get. So, Diplomat Shadow Chaos, smart move to some extent. I mean, obviously, they're still fighting Kingstad and they're still at a disadvantage to fight Kingstead. They still kind of need Etsuri's help, but I think they realize Etsuri is not going to be providing it. Etsuri is trying to build up as much as they can of their own economy, get their own production going, get it on par with Kingstead, if not better, and then hope for the... Seriously? 
Wow, okay. Cool. Well, alright then, the nerd the nerd pole is definitely doing a reasonably decent job as far as defenses to stop any real construction happening, but again, Etsuri is just not quite gone for that yet. And at the same time, another spider, another scorpion coming in here? Another set of widows coming in to take it out? That's kind of amusing. But again, Kingstad, they have the first one, they have the reclaim off that. And Deep Shadow Chaos doesn't really have any way of getting rid of this except that scorpion, which they will use in the Nemesis as well. They are sending those into place to try to get rid of the forces coming in from Kingstead. But it may not be enough. I mean, right now, Kingstead is... I mean, they're ready. They have the Widow up, just in case. Which surprisingly wasn't scouted, despite having been next to these ogres. And... What is the decollect raise in this thing, anyway? Oh, it's really short. Alright, that makes sense. But again, there it goes. Taking out... No! Hitting the Scorpion, but you need two of them. One is not enough. Still, though, the Scorpion did not quite manage to hit its D-gun shot. And there's still another, well, five seconds from the reload. Yeah, this Scorpion going in deep, trying to do everything it can to at least deal some damage, tank some damage. Not really sure what the goal is here, because it is not going to survive long enough to get that D-gun. And it goes down, opening Kingstad up massively to be able to just walk right into Deepen Machado Kaos' base. That was 7,000 metal worth of Scorpions finding nothing as Deepen Machado Kaos gets hit as well by Etsuri's roaming raiding force. I feel like Etsuri doesn't even care about building an economy. They just care about breaking everything as they go. They're getting what metal extractors they can or they need along the way, but they aren't actually building up a long-term economy. They're just breaking things everything else has, opening everything up as... Really, right now, just taking advantage of the fact that Kingston and Deepen Machado Kaos were distracted with each other, taking out Deepen Machado Kaos' commander, starting to raid away a lot of Kingstad's buildings. I mean, feels like more like hitting Etsuri is a bad idea. They just go after you. Like, if you attack them... They will attack you. I mean, Taptoflex and Nope had their... Okay, it's more Taptoflex and Nope built an expansion that Etsuri attacked that first, so Etsuri was the aggressor there, but Deepen the Chattic House, Nimbus the mechs over here, and clearly Etsuri is not one to forgive lightly. They've taken that out completely. So with that, Etsuri, I still think, is not at an advantage. Kingstad is building up Singularity Reactors. They're still building up a massive overdrive grid. Like, they're still in a really good spot. But that's not going to be enough. Dipma Chattic House looks like they're likely to throw in the towel. As really, Etsuri just coming from behind. They were such... such an, no one was really noticing them because they were just fighting Tataflex and Nope. And cleaning up everything else. Essentially just being the janitor of this match. But finally swinging around to take out Dipma Chattic House means they are the one threat to King's Dead. Which, not sure by how much. Army value... Pretty well on par. Defense value is way higher for Kingstad. Big reason why Di by King by Etsuri is actually in a reasonably good spot right now is because Kingstad is focused so much on Doomsday devices, desolators, and so forth that they aren't really in a position to actually fight directly. Etsuri is able to expand if they want to. They have all the territory on this w western side of the map, honestly. Etsuri's got loads of metal available to them. It's not like they're running short. The only thing right now is, well, what is Etsuri going to do now that they're taking out, or partly taking out Diplomat Shadow House? Diplomat Shadow House with this Paladin might not go down as easily, now that I think about it. I mean, it's clear that with Kingstad coming in here to take out Diplomat Shadow House, I mean, Kaos is dead. They're done. They've they've lost this. But Etsuri, I don't know. They're not too far behind an army value, but that lack of production means it's going to be that much harder to actually set up. Like, how do you set that up if your army is not that expensive? Or not that expensive. Not that strong value-wise compared to your opponent. Your opponent has loads of defenses. Your opponent's got a relatively even army. They've got a stronger economy. And yes, that Tremor is indeed leveling them out and making that crab far easier to hit. I mean, that's what Tremors do. That is a part of Tremors projectiles people don't think about too much, but it is very important. It levels terrain. Not quite sure of the math is for that, if it like averages around whatever it hits, but yeah, it levels terrain. Hence this right here, where this crab is forced down onto relatively walkable ground for shield butts. And of course, tremors are more importantly useful for getting rid of all of these forces here the Cerebus, the Desolator, the Factory, possibly, if it manages to hit it enough. All at the same time, Deep in the Chattic House, they've been left alone for now. Paladin coming in here, pushing away Kingstad's forces, as Kingstad's much more focused on getting rid of Etsuri. But I feel like Etsuri's kind of really doing this in a risky fashion. I mean, they're painting a target on themselves by setting up 
this force by pushing in with all these, well, with everything on either side. And now Diplomat Machado Cows definitely worried about Kingstad as Kingstad decided, hey, this is a massive opening. I can take out Diplomat Machado Cows with Etsuri's help, I guess, or Etsuri coming in and attacking. But that also left Kingstad open, which means Etsuri is still not the one being hit while they are gradually expanding and getting their economy stronger and stronger, and their army is consistently growing in strength. As it's gradually taking out Kingstad. When Kingstad just trying to finish off Diplomat Machado Cows, similar thing to what we saw with Etsuri against Tetflex and Nope, except Etsuri is punishing Kingstad in the way that Kingstad never punished Etsuri. Of course, Kingstad still has a very strong economy, so it's not like Etsuri is going to be able to get this for free. It's just that Etsuri is still putting a lot of pressure on the Kingstead. Still, though, Scorpion has been revealed, revealed a little bit too soon, though. There's the D-Gun coming in here. Does damage the shields heavily, but only st only stuns about four units. Well, this is an entire army. How many is there? Like 20? 30? 37 units. Four of them were stunned out. And the rest able to disarm both the Crab and the Scorpion. So, not a particularly successful attempt by Kingstead to push back. And Etsuri might actually be able to get rid of all of this. The only downside for Etsuri is that they can't really push past the Cerberus. At least, not right now. If they had something in the air, maybe. No Striders yet. They have a Strider hub. But I don't know, some kind of... like a, If they had a Leco, I could see it. Maybe a couple Lecos take out that Cerberus. Maybe take out the Desolators as well. That could work. But it's going to be tricky. At the same time, over to the south, though, we do have the Paladin set up. We do have an ultimatum coming in to take out the Paladin. And we have a... Okay, just terraform ant here. So, Paladin definitely... Still keeping Diplomat Shadow Cows in the game, but now Kingstad is turning around. They're realizing I, the ultimatum is their goal for the Paladin, to take out the Paladin. That means the rest of the army can go north and start taking out Etsuri's forces. As Etsuri's forces getting a little bit more damage this time. They're coming in, they're taking out the Cerberus... Not yet taken out the Desolators, though, so the Desolators are still a problem. And, of course, the Scorpions remain a problem as well, as there's another Scorpion coming in from Kingstead, pushing Etsuri into the sea. And actually, Etsuri losing a lot of forces right now, and Kingstead with a 7k medal lead when it comes to their actual army value. So, Etsuri, they're behind an economy, they're a little behind an army, they've... They have awakened a sleeping giant, and, or at least a distracted giant. And they're kind of paying for it. I mean, they're really paying for it. Etsuri actually is probably going to attack immediately. Dip much out of cows. Not as much of a threat. Again, the ultimatum is the main reason, likely, why that is not seen as a threat. Because the ultimatum is just going to counter that paladin directly. But now Etsuri has to deal with the fact that they are going to be hit hard. Kingstad is not worried about Dip much out of cows. Not a threat at all. Etsuri, a bit more of a threat. But... While they are economically more or less on par with King's Dad, they are way behind in terms of army value at this point. They have half the army size. If they're trying to be valuable, getting an ultimatum of their own isn't a bad shot, or a couple ultimatums of their own isn't a bad idea. So we'll see how that works. As King's Dad also with their ultimatums just, okay, go for the counter nukes. Oh, sorry, counter nukes, counter striders. I do want to see if there's going to be shiny, but I don't expect so. I think everyone's focused so much on getting the units they need to actually win the game in the front lines that they're not going to be trying to go for any... Hail Mary passes with nukes. Though I kind of expect Kingstad to try something like that just because Kingstad is in a strong position. But nope, they're going for Striders. Going for Merlins and Scorpions. Also a good shot. Or a good idea. It's a good idea to throw him for that just because that is going to at least be a strong force. Get in, deal some damage. Same time though, there are the Eoses coming in. Taking out power plants, fusion reactors, taking out... I'm trying to take out Desolators, but no, getting hit by the shields instead. So dealing some damage from distance, I like it. Not a bad idea. At the same time, Kingstad is still the larger army. They can still wipe out a lot of the stuff that Etsuri's built up. And Etsuri is still behind economically. Like, I think it's I think the alliance between Etsuri and Dippin' House, that ship has sailed. But maybe? Like, Dippin' Machata House is still in a position where they can push, so they can get rid of a lot of the stuff that Kingstad has set up and kind of eke their way back into the game and force Kingstad to be distracted. And that leaves Etsuri open to continue to expand out and continue to build up. And yes, they lost their army, but their economy is still quite strong. And if if Kingstad is distracted and losing forces to this this paladin, if Diplomat Shadow Cows is providing something of a distraction and something of a force that is keeping Kingstad's army in check, Etsuri does have a chance to rebuild. If they play it right. I mean, it's... It is obviously an important distinction, but yeah, they have to play it right, otherwise it is going to be a problem. 
kill the ultimatum coming in here. Paladin is going to go down very rapidly. The ultimatum, the scorpions might be able to stun out a few of them. Maybe the D-Gun reloads, but it's not going to reload in time. One of the scorpions does get spotted. The ultimatums will be taken. Oh, really? Really? Wow, okay. No, that's why, because they're the same scorpions. What am I saying? They're not going to take out their own. No, they're going to move in and wipe out Diplomatic Chalice. That means there is nothing Etsuri can really do other than hold on with strong tactics and whatever they have in terms of army size. Because ultimatums are up. Good use of those will help get rid of the scorpions, but they won't really do much else. Diplomatic Chalice has resigned, so it's entirely 1v1 between Etsuri and Kingstead. And unless Etsuri has something up his sleeve that I do not see, which I don't see it... Well, actually, there's the crow. That's a possible thing. I I expect it'll probably die around here if it attacks here. Like, this litter will be a bit of a, maybe a bit of an issue. I don't know. This It's more a problem of how do you get through all this force. Like, Diplomatic House has just lost everything. And there's not a whole lot to get in on. I mean, there's Artemis is in place. There's an anti-nuke just in case. Not that it's going to matter, but still, there is an anti-nuke. There's... Well, there have been chainsaws around the map. There's, there's an anti-air to get rid of crows. There was... No, there still is. Oh, no, there wasn't. No. Good shot with the Artemis. Got rid of the Artemis effectively. That was great Swift. Swift came in, scouted out, spotted the Artemis. That left things open for the crow. So, okay. That's going to work. That being said, Ar there's nothing on the south side of the map. I mean, okay, yes, there's this tower, but that's about it. King's Dad can just waltz in here not to worry about anything. So with King's Dad being able to come in here, take apart all the stuff that's been built up, while at the same time, we have the Crow coming in and managing to get rid of the Cerberus, but not really doing any other damage, and no ground forces to follow up. While at the same time, the Scorpion coming in here, and the ultimatums are not in for Etsuri. This is looking very bad for Etsuri. Like, seriously, I don't know what they have because right now they are pretty well done. The Desolator, the one defense that was actually stopping the Scorpion, has been wiped out. This base is, I guess, decent for reclaim, but not going to be useful in the long term. And while another crow has been built... Wait, that's another crow. That's only the first crow. While the first crow has been retreated and repaired, Kingstead has striders all over the place. Not just demi-striders, full-blown striders everywhere. You have scorpions. You have ultimatums. You have everything you need to tear apart everything your opponents have. And all there is here is a crow. And actually, my bad. That is the second crow. The first one was destroyed. How did I miss that? Doesn't really matter, though. The problem is Etsuri just does not have the army value. King's Dead, way at, like three times the army value. Still fairly, still close-ish in economy, but King's Dead's taking it. Etsuri's partial hope is getting rid of this scorpion and maybe reclaiming it, but there's not a whole lot of reclaim infrastructure. The caretakers were destroyed. There's not a whole lot else to go with that. The Merlin is also in place. Gonna take out that missile silo. Like, there is nothing that's gonna stop that Merlin from wiping out the missile silo and all of its infrastructure. And good choice there, though. Firing off the missile right before the silo is destroyed, which would have blown up the missile along with the silo. So at the very least, the silo was useful in death. Same time, the ultimatums are coming in here. And not finding much value. King Ted's ultimatum was able to take out anything that was set up, and that is going to be basically it. I mean, there's... Yeah, there's not a whole lot here. The crow's coming in, doing what it can, but what it can is not enough. The scorpions wipe it out, and Etsuri realizes that, that is it. That is game. Throws in the towel as King's Dad takes it, starting from an early lead with Etsuri... On their heels, but ultimately, Etsuri only had an advantage they had because Diplomatic House was providing a distraction. Once Diplomatic House was destroyed, Etsuri did not have enough damage dealt to Kingstead to wipe out their economy. Kingstead had protected themselves well enough over in the north, and Etsuri didn't really try to attack anywhere else, and Diplomatic House couldn't get in either. So, with that, Kingstead never really got damaged heavily on all sides. I mean, they were distracted, but Diplomatic House and Etsuri did not work together to take down Kingstead. If they had, the two of them would have been able to fight it out to see who wins. But as it stood, really not possible. And if you look at the stats, too, I mean, it would have been close. If Etsuri and Diplomatic Dip House had teamed up, then Kingstad would have had an even match. It would have been essentially a 2v1 or a temporary 2v1. And it would have been an even match. But unfortunately, Etsuri attacked Diplomatic House, which meant Diplomatic House couldn't fight Kingstad alongside Etsuri, which meant Etsuri got destroyed by Kingstad. So yeah, that happens. Also, Kingstad pointing out that this crow died because scallops were thrown at it. 
that makes sense. Yeah, the scallops are actually really effective with gunships. Riots in general are effective at dealing with gunships. And yeah, that checks out all the scallops right here. So yeah, that is that. I hope you I hope you enjoyed that. That was that was interesting. I mean, I don't do a whole lot of FFA, so I'm not especially familiar with all the politics of how FFA works in Zero K specifically. But I am aware that FFA is one of those maps or one of those modes that can be a little bit fraught with politics, as this one might have been. I don't know. I mean, which, apart from that scorpion being exposed in the center of the map by Force God, I'm not really sure what else was politics. It felt like Etsri was just going in as this sledgehammer attacking every single base next to them counterclockwise in order, because why not? And Kingstad was just biding their time because they weren't getting directly attacked by enough forces to threaten them until they were, and at which point they had more than enough army to deal with it, especially as Etsri decided to fight Deep Machado out of Kaos and basically hand Kingstad the game. So yeah, that was that. Hope you enjoyed that. And Metal Alexa says, wow, that was a lot from Etsuri. Army value. Etsuri was actually on par with King... Yeah, that's right. Etsuri was on par with Kingstad for a while. They managed to build up as Kingstad was losing a lot of forces. Because Etsuri didn't lose a lot at the beginning. And they actually were pretty low on lost forces for the for the players that actually stayed in the game. And that was a big reason everything worked out. Their attrition was amazing. But of course, once they actually got into a straight fight with Kingstead, then it all fell apart after Dip Machado Kaos was destroyed because Dip Machado Kaos couldn't help out with Kingstead. Yeah. Well, at any rate... That is that, so hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for watching. That is going to be it for tonight. And apparently, according to Stream Chat, low communication is normal. So thank you for informing me of that. Anyway, that is, again, going to be it. So thanks for watching, and have a good night, everyone.